what is up you guys it's jasper chipe godmother and i am back okay i am back with another read yes i am back with a twin flame divine counterpart um kingdom spouse reading this is going to be for the people who are in separation the people who are in no contact very little contact or you know if it resonates and you and your person is in dealings and you know we got that too so we're gonna go ahead and tap in god ascended master so families and my family please be with me at this time hoping to receive a message to deliver to the collective okay i asked my collective and their soulmates twin flames divine counterparts and kingdom spouses step to the front of the building so we can go ahead and tap into their energy what messages does their partner have for them tonight all right let's go ahead and tap in i'm hearing no fake love like i don't want the fake love you know you got sagittarius here um i'm feeling like a um a faded connection could have been on hold due to an ex or trauma um and it don't even have to be like an ex lover this could be like ex friends um challenges in their life you got leo here you got the sun and you also have neptune okay so this is kind of given like the dreamy state nighttime um it's definitely giving somebody who could have potentially like slept on you <clears throat> for a lot of you guys your divine partner your twin flame your soulmate your kingdom spouse divine counterpart were going through challenges in their life that kind of box them in made them feel alone they could have been in a dark space this person could have had a lot of tension in their life a lot of tension in their body their neck i'm hearing bathroom stalls like somebody could have been crying in the stalls you would have never known this could have been at work you know this could be in grocery stores it's just like having social anxiety but that hasn't been something oh it's a little star <laughs> Um, that's not something that they've always dealt with. You could be dealing with the Aquarius. That's not something that they always dealt with, but there could have been a period in time where they were feeling really pressured, um, could have been pressured into doing something, could have been pressured into having sex with somebody, um, pressured into drinking, pressured into doing drugs, um, pressured into staying into a relationship or pressured into being the family provider. So this could have been a sibling who has seven other younger siblings who had to take care of multiple siblings this could have been a person who t told themselves like they didn't want to have kids or they weren't going to be a good mother this could have been a person who had an alcoholic mother a single mother a mother who was in the house alone a lot um i'm hearing like chain smoking this person could have a liver disease this person could be diabetic as well this person could have something going on that they just don't want you to know about, but they dream about you and they dream about what y'all could be if they were not sick. This person could have had like a um, heart attack or could just have like a lot of tightness in the chest due to like anxiety. This person could have panic attacks. This person could have really, really dark circles. This person could be having a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of nights spent crying. I'm hearing you gonna suffer. You gonna suffer. You gonna to me. You gonna cry. And it's crazy because I really do not like when tarot readers get this singing. But when I tell y'all it's not us, like it's literally a channeling through us. Like it's kind of just giving me like you don't have control over this. You don't have control over this connection. So you could be wanting to walk away from somebody. And it could just be really, really hard. This person could have walked away from you. Frozen heart. This person could be a shoddy ice cuff. You stiff on a nigga. <laughs> Somebody loves the fact that you be stiff on these hoes. You be stiff on these niggas. Like, it's kind of just like... 
I love that I don't have to question your loyalty to me. I know that you only want me. But in the past, you only wanting them could have been your biggest downfall where it was like, okay, this person knew that they could play with you. This person could have even told you, I know you're going to come back. You ain't never going to find nobody like me. I feel like this is not taking the easy route. So I noticed that a lot of people, um, it's like when things go wrong, when you thought somebody was your twin flame and then it turns out that they was a narcissist or they were abusive or they were a cheater or um, whatever it was, um, I, I feel like a lot of people let go of the journey, right? Just because you thought something was going to be something and it wasn't, right? Y'all have to understand with these tarot readings, they not always about right now. One thing I know about me as a reader, I read for the future. Like, I can read your energy now and I can tap into your energy now, but I'll also see the outcome of what's happening in your reality right now, right? Um, a lot of, some tarot readers read from the past. Some people be reading about third party situations and that's some shit that you didn't, that didn't happen two years ago. However, it's playing out right now in your life. How you're being affected is still what's happening in your life is the cause and effect of what happened two years ago and y'all be looking at the readers like oh i'm so tired of hearing about this i'm so tired of hearing about this however it's still very much in your energy so ask yourself when you listening to these readings are you doing what they're saying are you moving forward are you doing the work the inner work this feels like after a period of grief challenging times money problems being cooped up in your house being um trapped in a box at work feeling like i don't belong here i want to do more this could have been maybe you had a corporate job this could have been you going to school but but realizing maybe i really want to go to acting school i really want to do it have this career i really want to be famous or i really want to start my rap career i really want to do um modeling or photography or cinematography i really want to do digital creation maybe i really want to do like an online magazine where people get all the gossip or get all the tea not talking to share room i'm talking i want my own magazine i want my own website i want my own blueprint i want to come up with this somebody could be an architect it's like coming up with the visuals coming up with a prototype or something like that you could be inventing something this could be some shit that nobody ever seen before but it's useful and people are going to need it you could be just setting somebody could be upset at the fact that you're like traveling you're moving on with your life you have moved forward you could have been dealing with the cougar this could there could have been a 19 year age gap somebody could have liked to bring you roses bring you flowers but at the same time it's like they only bring you that shit when they did some messed up stuff this is somebody learn oh uh, this is somebody learning how hard you work learning how hard you tried to work with them how empathetic you were how soft and kind you were this is giving workhorse this could be you. You could be a hustler. You could grind. You could have multiple jobs. You could be a nurse, but at the same time, it's like, okay, yeah, I work three days all on, but then on my two days that I got off, guess what I'm finna do? I'm doing hair. I'm selling wigs. I'm doing makeup. I'm crafting. I'm painting. I'm doing commission pieces. I'm hearing, fuck you, pay me. Madam Muse, you never know who is watching you. This could have been a person who spends a lot of time being frustrated, a lot of time in a negative energy or a pessimistic energy, and they love you so much that they don't want to bring that energy towards you. However, without you, they're, they're miserable. They don't know how to get out of being miserable. They don't know how to stop being sad. They don't know how to stop hurting. They don't, oh my God. The pain kind of feels unbearable. If you in a relationship, you land with somebody who you don't even know what they're going with. They may tell you little things. They may express sadness to you. But I don't feel like you know the extent in which they're hurting. This could definitely be a Leo. I'm here. Of course, I'm going to knock all this shit over. 
so expressive but it's like they're roaring at you they're yelling at you or it's like you can't even hear it it's like just in their head like their thoughts are just yelling at them Somebody's house could be cold, getting stuck, snuck in the, stuck in the snow. Somebody could have got snuck, like somebody could have got beat up. Somebody could have got robbed. Somebody stole something from them. This could have been at a club, like a club fight, a bar fight. And it's like they didn't even want to be there in the first place. They knew something bad was going to happen. They went anyway. Somebody's car could have got broken into. Somebody is going through so much that you don't know. And they want to come to you. They just want to lay on you. I'm hearing they just want to, like, lay on your shoulder. They want you to, like, caress their hair, play with their ear, just comfort them like a baby. But they don't know how to be vulnerable. They don't know how to speak up. They don't know how to show up for themselves, let alone show up for you. I feel like God is kind of pulling you towards them. This is like unconditional love. Because I don't feel like this person is giving you a reason to love them anymore. It's like they're not cleaning up the house. They're not washing their ass. They're not helping you with shit. They're not helping you with the bills. They're not. They're just sad. And it's not that they don't want to. It's, it's they physically, they mentally, emotionally cannot and they're looking at you to help them. And they could be even mad at you because it's like, you're not doing shit to help me. You're just making shit worse. Because I love you and I want you to make shit better for me. But I know it's not your responsibility. But at the same time, if you say that you love me, why is it not? Ooh, my eyes watering. Oh, my God. on with my collective six of cups past life soulmates with the ace of wands using sexual energy to entice you or to bring you in so this could be like a fuck buddy this could be somebody who's just calling you to have sex but i promise you they dreaming about you nightly there's no third party there's no other person this person is just depressed or going through something this six of cups, they could be like, they could have lost a child. They could have lost a sibling. I'm here, a kid, a kid. Like this kid could have been in a car accident. This could be like a little cousin, a nephew. I'm hearing a broken leg. Sex injuries, I know that, that I'm seeing Grey's Anatomy when Lexi was like on top of Mark, right? He was a cougar. She was super young. She was, um, she was an intern, you know? So it's like a power struggle. Constantly like one person being ready for commitment and the other person not being ready. The four of wands, commitment. Wanting to be married, wanting to be in an official relationship or wanting to move in together, wanting to be committed, wanting to be fucking like rabbits. But it's like, that's on your mind because that's easier to think about than, damn, I got to tell him what I'm going through. Damn, I got to tell her that I just lost my job. The devil. Capricorn energy, right? I feel like temp temptress. Like, this is, this is kind of given, like, when you are on a path to righteousness and when God is leading your steps when you are literally hearing god's orders and you're walking in that god will send you tests right this is exes people who want to be intimate with you people who are giving you a little bit of attention people who are not going through as much people who you feel like friends asking you to go out knowing you need to be saving money your work constantly calling you to come in even though it's like they think you're replaceable the moment you don't come in when they need you to you're gonna get fired you know this is like realizing like no nah, god has a calling on your life god been told you to quit that job 
But because you didn't do it, I'm going to keep tempting you with more money. I'm going to keep telling them to call you in. And you got to ask yourself, do I love my kids? Do I want to spend time with them? Or am I making time for my business? It's like you're relying on a paycheck and stability from people who are, are not giving you stability. You're relying on love from women or from men who don't love you. This is creating your own sunshine, creating your own story, creating your own breakthrough. This is like, like beating down the walls, breaking down that door. This is like no longer waiting for other people to open the door for you, to open opportunities for you. This is beating down that, I'm beating down your lot. Yeah, Manaleo. This is like... <laughs> I was beating bitches up back when I was up in school. I don't know. This is like, you done had to fight. All my life I had to fight. Okay? This is like realizing that, like, damn, like, my nigga's strong. Instead of feeling like, damn, you always depressed, bitch. You always in that bed. You on the phone with your friend? Like, girl, get your ass up. No. This is being able to let people sit in their sorrow sometime, let people sit in their emotions, letting people feel what they're going to feel and not demeaning them, downing them. Oh, bitch, you always in a bed. Damn, since your house, this, yo, uh, damn, you let your niggas talk to you like that? Damn, girl. It's like, bitch, who you ju how we judging right now? And I'm sad. And you think it's okay to judge me more? Or to tell me what I need to do and try to fix me and give me all this advice. You think I ain't already said that in my head? What are you talking about? I don't need to be fixed. I don't need you to keep telling me what to do. I got this. I'm sad. Let me be sad. This is validating somebody's sadness. That's what somebody wants from you. Queen of Cups. Sadness. Emotions. Somebody knows how nurturing you are. Somebody watched you go through heartbreak. This could have been the person that loves you, could have watched you be in another relationship. This could have been a friend of the family, you know, somebody who they loved you, but it was kind of like y'all grew up together as like cousins or family or, you know, like super, super close. And you just happened to fall for them or they just happened to fall for you. But they watched you be in an abusive relationship or a relationship with your ex where you were not happy, where you were being mistreated, where nobody was romantic, where you were constantly having to beg for communication, beg for love, beg for affection. They watched that happen. They watched you grow up. Even if y'all only known each other for a year, two years, three years, when you first met this person, maybe you were going through shit. The time I'm gonna cry. The tables have turned. You were going through shit when you first met this person. This person could have let you high and dry. This person could have just felt like you had too much going on. This person could have left you because you had kids. This person could have just been tempted by the devil. Okay. This person could have had test after test after test and they failed them. I'm seeing so many rabbits. I'm seeing a sneaky cat. But it's not giving sneaky. It's giving like fierce. It's also giving emotional support. It's giving like let me come curl up with you. Look at this cat though. It looks like it's lurking. Like stalking. Like prey. Or like what are you looking at? Like what? This is somebody who just watches you and your kids play. But it's like, it's giving like this a mirror. And they looking. And they can see y'all in a reflection in the mirror. But you're not even paying attention to them. You got your own thing going on. You giving yourself your flowers. This is like somebody who did not appreciate you. Maybe you dress different. Maybe your hair is different. Maybe you bald. Maybe you short and they're tall. Or, you know, it's giving you're white, they're black. Um... They got money, you don't. Like, it, it, it's kind of just giving, like, y'all had a lot of differences. And now this person is realizing, I kind of want to be like you. How do you talk to God like that? How do you have them gifts like that? So if you stumbled upon this video, baby, you're gifted. You're talented, creative, 
smart, a beauty, handsome, strong. You got muscles. You got a nice figure. You got a nice shape. You got a nice smell. You got a nice walk. You got a nice everything. And somebody is heartbroken by some of the shit that they either put you through or that they're watching you go through. So if you're the one going through a hard time, somebody is watching you like, damn, I just want to be there for you. I just want to give you my cup. Okay, I don't know why I just heard somebody could have finger waves. Somebody could be getting their hair done. Somebody could be a loctician. Somebody could be in beauty school. Somebody could like to do hair. I'm seeing a lot of gold as well. Somebody could love jewelry. I'm hearing hiccups. Hiccups. Like, why are you saying it like, like that? I got the hiccups. Okay, this could be a child. Like a child running in your room. Like, mommy, I got the hiccups. I got the hiccups. Right? This is paying attention to detail. Well, baby, why you got the hiccups? What you do? What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm just hearing, like, whining and complaining and, like, okay, well, what do you want me to do about it? Like, it's like somebody is in a very childish or childlike energy when they're around you because you feel so innocent. You feel so free. It's like they've watched you. It's like moving mountains. They've watched you move mountains. They've watched you even move mountains for them. And they did not do the same for you. But this person is coming with commitment. This person is coming with that fire, that heat, that splat. Okay, Ray, so wavy. Coming apart. Right? This feels to me like taking that mask off. Taking the blindfold off. You could have a twin. Your twin could have passed away in the womb. You could be a rainbow baby or have rainbow children or could be wanting rainbow children. If you are trying to conceive, I see it happening in the next six weeks to six months. Busting it wide open. <laughs> Lay down, let me suck your titties, caress them pretty bitches, and put it down and show you in it that I'm a sick. <laughs> Can't you touch your caramel with a smile to make your pre cum? And Santa Claus, and she finna around my fucking slate, okay? This is like that old school love, that throwback love, that back in the day. Like, y'all could have been like riding on the top lot together. I'm seeing somebody on a big wheel, a little boy chasing her. It's kind of giving like. Why ain't we make this work sooner? Why ain't we like why we didn't just do this with one another? Somebody want to sit up and talk on the phone for hours. Somebody wants commitment. Somebody is trying to build up the strength to really tell you because they're really afraid of rejection. You know, you got the number eight, you got 98. Somebody could have been born in 98. Seventeen forty three, not seventeen thirty eight, but I heard seventeen forty three. Okay, I don't know what that is. She like, hey, what's up, hello? See your pretty ass when you are like that at time. Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean, wanting to have like a movie night. Like somebody loves your like movie selections. Then I say mountains, it's like moving mountains, right? But he looked like an old soul. You know, they say mountains and all that shit. Like I feel like all of that is energy. All of that are souls. Like I... wanting to travel. This could be somebody who dives in a cave. Somebody who travels to the cave. Somebody who watches weird documentaries. Somebody who do a lot of weird shit in their house, but people would never know it. Um, somebody who wants to crack your code. It's like, how do I just get her to love me? How do I get him to just show up for me? You know, how do I get him to open up to me? It's like, you really, th I'm hearing violins. Oh, Cupid. Y'all could be going to a symphony for Valentine's Day. Somebody could be inviting you out to a show. Somebody, I'm hearing um, Warbucks, Mr. Warbucks. Somebody could have a lot of money. This person could have been a sugar daddy turned into like true love. This could have been somebody you wasn't even attracted to. 
but who they were, who they are, that's what started to attract you. And when I say I'm here, I'm waiting to excel. It's like you giving a nigga a chance and then he is still show you that he ain't shit. Ugh. Mm. Yeah, this is being tired of dating. Being tired of showing that these niggas ain't shit. It's a car outside my house that's stuck in the snow. I hear the tires like constantly going. This is something somebody's heart having to work in overdrive for their partner. It's like I'm gonna be the strong one right now because I want marriage with you. I want commitment with you. I want forever with you. So how dare I break this off because we having a couple rough months or because you don't lost your job or because of your struggling? How dare I say that I want a lifetime with you, but every time I'm going through shit, I'm running away. How are we supposed to get through our children going through shit or going through family events, going through shit happening, going through deaths? How am I supposed to trust you to show up for me and to be here for me if every time you're going through something, you're going to shut down? Let me be here for you. Let me help you. I feel like this is a gentle love because it's not poking and prodding. It's not like, I'm, I'm going to come over every day. I want to spend time. No, it's like, what do you need? How you need me to show up for you? How you need me to be there for you? You don't want to talk for a couple of days? All right, cool. Cool. I'm going to give you your space. I'm going to let you rest. I'm going to let you do you. I'm going to still check on you in a week or so. No love lost. See, I'm going to check on you every day. I'm going to send a text every day. I don't want to annoy you. But I'm going to send a text every other day just to make sure you're okay, make sure you're alive. This is somebody who could have potentially been suicidal. If there was a death, like, this could have been, like, you lost a loved one. Like, let's say, like, a spouse. Like, this your man. I'm seeing you jumping in the casket with him or, like, wanting to feel like, damn, like, watching somebody casket be lowered and, and feeling that and seeing in your mind's eye your life without them, seeing that, damn, I'm never going to see this person ever again. I'm hearing money, Monroe, Mecca, the Mecca, the Don. Don Juan, Magic Don Juan. <clears throat> it's giving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. One minute you good, one minute you not. One minute you good, one minute you not. And it's that ping pong energy where it's like, well, shit, you need the back and forth. I can't play ping pong by myself. I need my partner. So when you can't hit it, when you ain't got it, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have your back because I got you. Outside of how you treated me, Outside of what's going on, and this is not saying that if somebody is putting their hands on you to keep loving them. This is not saying that if somebody is cheating on you to keep loving them. But even then, I ain't going to speak that. I ain't going to say that. But let's be real. There are real life marriages out here who the woman cheated, the man cheated, they came back together. Y'all went to counseling. I don't want to use cheating because... Uh, mm, I ain't that healed yet, <laughs> but I have to take myself out the reading. This not this not about me, right? So it's given like if somebody has done something to hurt you, this is about not taking it personal. Even if you choose not to forgive them, even if you choose to move on with your life and not be with them no more, this is not taking what has transpired personal. It don't got nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them and where they are in their life. How sad they are, how depressed they are, how lonely they feel, how insecure they are, how incomplete they feel. Trying to fill that void, trying to find some form of happiness or relief from their thoughts, their mental turmoil. I heard mental torture, okay? This reading is not gonna be for everybody. But I'm hearing everything that glitters and gold. Mm. This is not the reading that I was expecting, baby. It's not. And even in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, let's cheer it up. Let's talk about something else, right? But maybe that ain't the case. Maybe that's what I don't need right now. I don't need cheering up. I don't need the happier or the brighter side of things. I need you to see me right here and still love me. Whew. Nine 
Nine of Cups, single. Three of Cups. Wanting a commitment. King of Cups. All Cups, all emotions, all innate feelings. A wish. You are somebody's wish fulfillment. They got a lot of Cups. They're probably super attractive. They got a lot of options. They only got eyes for you. They only have love for you. They only want a reunion with you. This ain't even no third party. This ain't even no celebration. This is a reunion. This is the coming together. This is the birth of a child. Somebody wants to offer you their cup, 333. Somebody is ready based on how you've treated them through their turmoil. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Share it on all your social medias. I'm out of here, you guys.